Hello, folks. Welcome again to another edition of the Hobo and his, well, well, just the Hobo right now. As you can tell, I got my semi-annual haircut. It's all gone, folks. It's going to be so much more comfy, though. It's one of those things, I don't know. It's just easier to sleep. My hat feels bigger. Motorcycle helmet goes on a little bit smoother. It's good stuff. I'm not here to talk about my personal grooming habits. I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling mainly. I'm here to talk about some WWE. And let me start off by thanking some people. Sonny Bimbo, you sir are a very valued member of the Daytona Beach Bum Fight community here, of course. Run by the one, the only Hobo Tom. But you, sir, can crawl out of here. I know I'm probably going to get this wrong. Clary. Wow. Raymond, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. You, sir, thank you very much for your comments during TLC. TLC. You, sir, got the six count. And there's one other person of infamy. As the God asked, you, sir, are a for again. If you really wanted to see it, you pony up the money. Don't tell me what to do. A uh, little thing about TLC, I didn't get to see all the matches. I did get to see kind of most of the show, though. I think I started the show about 7.50, I think, for sure, 8 o'clock. So I got back from work, 
about yeah, 7.50, started to cook breakfast for myself because it's just that time of day. And let's see here. Wow, I chose three matches correctly, three matches wrong, and a push. So you know what that means, folks? Whoa, with that push, I am a 50-50 booker. In the WWE Universe, probably isn't that bad. That's it for TLC. I think there are going to be no more pay-per-views for the rest of the year. With the exception, of course, my league, the Daytona Beach Bump Fight lead, for both a Merry Drunk Miss Eve celebration and, of course, Delete Miss. But that's going to go on later. So again, if you want to see what I thought about TLC, you can catch up on that. that I actually did a live stream for. Tomorrow I might be lazy and do a live stream too for AEW. Live streams are just so much easier. And I can at least figure out stuff on the fly a little bit. And you guys get to see the inner workings of the Hobo Studio. So Bob and I are talking about I'm here to catch up about what I've missed. Um, yes, well, today I had to work. And therefore, I could not catch Impact, which is not fun because I do enjoy Impact. I want to see what happens. Their first pay per view in January, I think. We'll see because I think they have theirs on Sundays too. So that means I'll be able to see that for the most part in this full view because I think they start at 8, I think. I will definitely be home for that. With that said, tomorrow is going to be my. Kind of monster show. It's going to be both an AEW review, and I'm going to at least take a look at the most recent NWA Power Hour. I try to get so much in, but with work and work, and now I have to schedule more work. It's just hard to catch up on wrestling, especially NWA, where it's like the last thing I saw was, eh. I mean, if you're going to make me watch pro wrestling, you don't want to put on meh shows. You want to wow me. You want, you want to give me a reason to watch your product. And right now, NWA, for the most part, is not doing that. So let's talk about something that is doing that. Well, for the most part, WWE. And we're going to go back a bit. And actually, I managed to catch parts of the SmackDown recap and the rerun of it today, which I didn't realize that Fox... It's one does their recap, I guess, 11 o'clock on Tuesday nights, which is good. It's something I will have to remember. I have to check to see if YouTube does that, too. That would be interesting. But let's talk about some SmackDown! So with all the business from TLC, um, SmackDown was interesting. Uh, first, it had a Roman Reigns versus Dolph Ziggler recap. Uh, then, of course, Baron Corbin come out and Dolph got a promo. And then, the New Day Rocks. New Day Rocks. Came out, uh, cut a promo on him. This was, again, pretty promo-heavy. Again, remember, this was actually the go-home promo. So there wasn't too much... Whoa, there really wasn't that much wrestling. I'm just realizing that. Uh, we had Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross taking on Fire and Desire. Boo, Sonya Deville! Uh, Fire and Desire jump Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross from the start. And I'll tell you what. Those bottoms on Mandy Rose, they're moving down. I'll tell you what, you can... They go down lower and lower every time. Same is true of Alexa Bliss, though. Uh, with that said, that bottom on Mandy Rose. Boo, Sonya Deville! That's all I have to say about that. Mandy Rose is all the booty. This was a pretty fun match. Uh, hard to really say anything bad happened. It wasn't spectacular. I'll tell you what. Mandy Rose has amazing knees, though. And Boo Sonya Deville, she's actually getting better. But because she defeated, defeated my princess, Kimberly, I will always boo Sonya Deville, though. Boo Sonya Deville. Alexa Bliss got in her offense. Nikki Cross got in her offense. It was actually pretty fun. Again, there was the outside interference, which allowed 
Nikki Cross to pick up the pin after the neck breaker on Boo Sonya Deville, so she got her comeuppance. Nikki Cross won. Ah, a ham sandwich of a match. It's always hard to judge these matches because you know they're not going to tease anything too great. Then we had... Oh, Sammy Zayn came out and Heavy Machine was going with a Christmas ham. Sammy, you should always accept a Christmas ham. Boo, Sammy Zayn. And the one fan was partially right here at Daytona Beach. I did watch my video a couple times. Uh, boo, Canadians, go back to Canada. That's a perfectly fine statement to say. Calling him gay and using a homophobic slurs. Yeah. Ten years ago, 20 years ago, that would have been probably fine. I guess today people are soft. S-A-W-F-T soft. Uh, with that being said, yeah, if, if, you're being, if you're Canadian and you're told to go back to Canada, People in Daytona Beach do get tired of the snowbirds. You have to kind of expect that. Say, boo, go back to Canada. That's nothing really get overly upset about. So I've said my piece about that. Uh, heavy machinery, they try and give Sammy a ham. Sammy, oh, he, he, he's, he just made fun of Otis, and Otis looks so dejected. Otis has such great facials. Uh, Cesaro eventually dropped the ham on the floor. Who wants Cesaro for wasting good food? And then we get to our next wrestling match. It was Shorty G and Mustafa Ali, the Ali G team, taking on the Revival. I'll tell you what, this was an amazing match. Most of SmackDown, the segments can be absolute garbage. But I'll tell you what, though. This was great. It was a classic wrestling match. Really, for the most part, until Mustafa Ali got in. And the Revival went to commercial break for a while. And then after that, they isolated Shorty G again. Very classic in what the Revival do. Uh, Shorty G, he does the victory roll. He does the victory roll pretty good. Then the first, a double team. By the Revival, so good. And also the double team by Shorty G and Mustafa Ali is pretty fun. Uh, they did the belly to back to 450 suit. Uh, 450 chain wrestling was is amazing. How they get the timing down is beyond me. But again, the revival smart though. Then they hit the shattering machine. It's always fun to see that. I'll tell you what, this is a fun match overall. This is a surf and turf match. And we have Kayla backstage, and, and she's interviewing Bailey. Then all of a sudden, drum, you hear Elias. Oh, walk with Elias. And Dana Brooke, who's looking cuter and cuter every time. Hey, Dana, I'm single, okay? Next time you come to Daytona Beach, go to a certain mall and a certain store, and you can see this guy, Hobo Tom. Just say you want to go fishing. I'll take you fishing anywhere. Yeah, you get fired too, but Dana Brooke would be worth it. Um, but for some reason, oh wait, Elias actually <laughs> seemed to be serenading Dana Brooke. This is funny. Then he starts to sing a song about Bailey. And Elias wants to have a threesome. Not one, not two, but three. Elias. Bailey and Sasha Banks. You're the man. Whoa, actually, I'm actually shocked that, that someone wrote that. That was great writing, and the song he sang was fun. But that was probably the best segment. And then, of course, Bailey said, Oh, well, if you think that's funny, let's go have a match and fight over it. And Dana's like, Okay, fine, I'm heading there now. And then, I don't know, Bailey said something about Elias and that was funny. Yeah, Dana was, was Elias' groupie. Oh, burn. 
Actually, the threesome line was like the line of the night. Uh, but then we had Hot Dana Brooke taking on Bailey. And the first one was a slap fest. Whoa! Bailey can slap, but Dana Brooke can slap back. That was pretty good. Uh, there was a catapult into the second rope. Dana Brooks really improved. She has such a better look. I like the fact that she's gone to, I guess for lack of a better term, unicorn colors. They, they match her hair. Her skin tone it doesn't look like she's nude. She has enough glitter. She needs a glitter bomb, though. If she had a glitter bomb, oh, it would be like the mist, but glitter bomb, that would be, that would be good. Uh, Bailey eventually did win. Yeah. This was actually a more fun match than I'm making out to be. Maybe I just poo pooed Bailey because she has a terrible, I don't know, she has a heel look. Wait, if she has a heel look, that means she's doing her job. It was a cheeseburger match. Then we have The Miz versus Fiend recap. Uh, Sheamus is coming back. Uh, Renee and the Miz is the recap again, all about Daniel Bryan. It's a Miz shoot and the Miz shoot interview that was amazing. Uh, then of course he's back at Le Chateau Miz, not in Los Angeles anymore. They live in Dallas. Even I followed Miz and Mrs. That's a funny show. They just seem to really love it. Uh, they find the daughter with a with a new doll. Oh, at this be Liv Morgan, a Liv Morgan threesome. Oh. No, probably not happening. And then there was a Firefly Funhouse thing. Um, the new doll live. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We want Lee live or we riot. And of course, snitches get stitches. So you can't think out people. That was pretty cool. Then we have the tag team match. Uh, heavy Machinery take on Cesaro, Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. Cesaro needs to lose the tights. He just doesn't look right with those tights. Tucker and Otis are in trunks. Those two, I'll tell you what, they're eating it up. They're having fun. Because now they're both in trunks. Before Tucker used to wear a singlet, Otis was in trunks. Otis is having a blast. Uh, and for this, Otis was actually doing joint manipulation. Whoa! Otis learned British style wrestling! Yes! That's always good. And then they did the little belly pump to the head of Cesaro. That was great. Uh, Tucker, for the most part, takes the lumps. Again, when he gets when he gives Otis a hot tag, I'm not even going to say Otis hulks it up. Otis wiggles it up. That's the only way to put that. Then, and Otis goes for the caterpillar. He gets such a pop. He's so good. Sammy Zane again eventually interferes. That leads to the Kinshasa by Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro win. A good solid match. A cheeseburger match. That we had uh, King Corbin taking on Kofi Kingston. Kofi starts off hot, and the thing is, I guess it's the direction, but once they come back from break, you just find Baron Corbin beating him up a lot. And for the most part, during the uh, picture-in-picture, Kofi Kingston kind of really holds his own. Again, until he's caught by Baron Corbin uh, doing a dive or a hurricane or something. And for the most part, it seems to be like a semi lumberjack match because you have a biggie on the outside. Dolph's there, security's there. So Kofi definitely wants to stay in the ring. Uh, then Baron Corbin, again, he slows. He has that methodical pace. I like the fact that the crowd was chanting Burger King. That was, that was actually kind of funny. The crowd, for the most part, was pretty good. You hear an audible, <gasps> of course, when Elias had the. Magical word of threesome, along with Sasha Banks. Like, yeah, that just put an image in I think, everyone's head. I hate it when this happens to my fingers. Like that weird kind of skin fleshy thing between the nail and the edge of the finger. 
Everyone knows what that's like. It's just annoying. However, King Corbin did pick out of an SOS. And that was kind of a shock. And then eventually Dolph gets interfered. Dolph gets tossed. And then eventually he's like, no, I'm not going out. There's a brawl. Referee says, it's a no contest, baby. We got to sell the dusty titties. We got to sell the dusty cheese bugger. And then, well, of course, it's a holla, 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 baby. It's an improv. Oh, maybe, wait, maybe that's a picture. I don't know. Yeah, that's my Christmas. That seemed really heavy. Yeah. Um, I'm wandering. I'm sorry. So then we get a holla, 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 baby. We have our impromptu tag team match. Uh, Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler take on the New Day. Uh, Dolph eventually they isolate Big E because Kofi's all beat up. It was a good, nice spot along the ropes. So I'll tell you what, Dolph Ziggler is a smooth wrestler. He's amazing at at his um, selling. He's he's very technically based. He's sound wrestler. It's just that his wrestling persona sucks, and I'll blame. I won't necessarily blame him. I'll definitely blame WWE creative, though. Uh, then the New Day, again, they begin to dissect both Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler. They beat him up until they handcuff Kofi Kingston. You can't do that. And this led to another DQ, baby. This is a death definitive. Because you cannot handcuff anyone. Only the cops can do that. And Dolph Ziggler, you ain't no copper. And you, Ben Corbin, are a Burger King. But still, this match was really fun. This was a cheeseburger match. And then, of course, because Kofi Kingston's all in chains, they beat up Biggie a lot. Biggie's incapacitated Roman Reigns, and they threatened to. Feed Kofi Kingston dog food! Dog food! But then, of course, Roman Reigns comes out. He cleans the house. He beats up everyone. Uh, what's that? Yeah, then, of course, they have the, the table sliders and chairs come out. Uh, Roman, again, <laughs> takes on... T takes Diggler through the table. Um, So many tables. Were kind of teased to being used. So, this was, again, a good cheeseburger match. I probably said that before. And overall, it wasn't a bad go home. I'd say it was a cheeseburger of a SmackDown. And now that we're back from our little break, as indicated by Yano, the greatest person of the break, and actually, he has wrestling moves called the Yano. Wow. If you get wrestling moves named after you, that's, all, that's, that's actually actually pretty high price. But let's talk about some Raw. Uh, interesting show. The promos were better. The wrestling was pretty good. Liv Morgan in the bath was amazing. But I'll get to all that stuff. And actually, it was a fairly fun show. It um, starts off with a Seth Rollins promo, Seth and AOP again. He is the architect of pain. And there was some guy in the background. He's like, you can't see me. That's a pretty good idea like that. So it started off after he came out. That was the Viking Raiders. War. 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 Uh, AOP versus Viking Raiders versus the club would be amazing. If they have to do that for my my Super Wrestle Fest in Daytona Beach, which I'll get to later. Oh, I have to make I have to make the Daytona one. So much to make. I still have to make Will Fettuccini 
and Big Boss Lady along with Mojo. Because again, Lil Fittigini and Mojo enter the ranks with Dan Blaze and Bum Slicks as creative characters in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. Again, if you want to be in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League, just like send a bunch of messages uh, either through Discord, comments, or emails. I don't check emails that often, though. I'm, I'm, I'm bad at that. I'm sorry. But with that being said, we have the Viking Raiders. War, war, war. Versus the club for life. They're too sweet. And didn't we just see this? WWE has a very bad habit about, about doing this, especially after pay-per-views when the match wasn't so hot. This was much better though, because at least there was a big that was a good finish. Uh Samoa Joe's on commentary. Samoa Joe. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Oh, Samoa Joe, we're not worthy. Uh, but he's does such a good job. Uh, this was very much a New Japan style match, which was good. It was a hard hitting match. Poor Carl Anderson. Too bad he's a smaller of the two. Again, it was a good grinding match. Ellis definitely plays a big guy role amazingly. Classic isolation by the club. They're so good at their tag team work. Also, good isolation by the Viking Raiders. A lot of good double team work they do. Ivar is just amazing. I don't know. I've done a moonsault before. I'm still smaller than Ivar is. Yeah, I'm probably yeah, I'm probably uh, I might be the same size as Ivar. So yeah, it's not that surprising, but I'll tell you what, when you see big guys do moonsaults like that, wow. No, he didn't miss it though. Again, the Viking Raiders had kind of all the classical moves. And hooch. That one exploder suplex. Poor Carl. He needs some more chicken nuggets. Uh, but eventually the club actually hit the magic killer. The club win? Carl Anderson's not eating a pin? Yes. Yes. C. C. Bien. 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 All that stuff. So, this was fun. I thoroughly enjoyed this match. This was an amazing way to start off the show. Seth's promo was to the point. Authors of Pain just, just like, badass. It was a very good surf and turf match. Then we had Eric Rowan uh, versus some jobber. I'll tell you what. I'll give the jobbers one thing. They're being creative. They're trying. Uh, instead of trying to run around the ring, because every time he does that, Rowan cuts him off, the jobber says, you know what? I'm going to go underneath the ring. Very smart there, jobber. What's in the box? Uh, with that, though, however, at least the jobbers are getting smarter. I'll give them that. Again, once Rowan gets his hands on him, he starts to toss him around like a rag doll, just beats him senseless. Rowan wins another squash match. But again, the jobbers are getting creative about how they get to that thing in the cage. This will be interesting to see what happens. It's I don't know if it's going to be a rat or a chihuahua. I mean, a, a big rat and a chihuahua is probably the same thing. Dunk? That would be pretty cool. That would be different. I guess a possum or a snake. So you have a rat chihuahua, skunk, possum, or snake. And just to make it even, because I have five fingers, I'll say a raccoon. <laughs> I don't know why. Although, actually, you know what? Instead of raccoon, I'll say all oh, alligator. They haven't had alligators in the ring in a while. And if it's small enough, if it bit you, it would hurt. But as long as it's small enough, it's not really going to shatter any bones. It has to be somewhat small because it is being traveled in a cage. But we'll see what happens with that. But again, this was fun. This was a ham sandwich. Then we had an Andrade interview. And again, this is more, more of a tease-up with Selena Vega. Hey, Selena Vega wants to do her own thing. Power to her. I did understand some Spanish uh, 
as 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 the as the mean noche, it's my night. I think is what he said. That's what I took it as. I'm decent with Spanish. I mean, comida, comida, pollo y cerveza, no mas. Uh, cabello or no, or no cabello, mascarita. Cabello y mascarita. Yep, I lost both. <laughs> I probably just insulted a whole bunch of people. I'm sorry, folks. My Spanish is terrible. Then we had a Daniel Bryan recap. And then we had Liv Morgan in a bathtub. Ooh, Liv Morgan in a bathtub. Yes. Yes. Si. 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 Bien. 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 Oh, that hurt. Oh, sorry about that, folks. But yeah, Liv Morgan, as long as it's not a failed Emelina gimmick, that's okay. If we see if we see Liv Morgan, the porn star, wow, that would be great. As long as it's not the cruddy Emelina garbage. And Eva Marie was actually kind of funny, at least. If Liv Morgan tried to do an Eva Marie with a working part of Emelina, that might work. So we'll see what happens. Then it was Bobby Lashley and Lana, and too bad we didn't even see a little more coochie from, from Lana, a little coochie panty, because there was one shot of it when she jumped on Rusev's back. And you saw Lana. So yeah, that was okay. I don't know. I'm, I'm over these weird marriage gimmicks. When it involves family, unless they do it right. Oh, Wendy! At the Styles house. <laughs> it literally looked like they went to, over to someone's house, bought the lettering from Home Depot, and put it on their mailbox. That was funny. <laughs> Samoa Joe's also so good. Samoa Joe makes terrible segments so good. One of the few wrestlers that could actually do that. Then we have our gauntlet match. And I'll go over each match, and then I'll give the whole thing a rating. We have starts off with R-Truth to go on the characters out. This was fun. Um, R-Truth is still the 24-7 champion. The, it was suspended because of that. Because of this particular match, no one could really interfere. The characters out was amazing. He, I, I, well, I don't know why he, I think he was for a short time 205 champion, but he's so good. And the fact that he actually went after he got, after R Truth got his offense in again, R Truth does his whole shtick, the James Brown thing, I guess his kicks in. But I'll tell you what, Akira can fly. And he, he's so good and smooth, though. And he knows how to do those roll ups. God, that's the most devastating move in all of wrestling. That's the winning move. That should be a finisher. Oh, little Fettuccini, guess what your finisher is going to be? It's going to be La Mahitra. I'll have to see. No, they have to have that somewhere. Or like a victory roll. That would be your signature. La Mahitra is going to be your finisher. I'm sorry. I just have to put that in there. Mojo's going to have something pretty cool. I'll think of something. Yeah. Definitely a little fettuccine is getting the Lama Heaster as a furniture. Um, so, so then it went to. So that was actually fun. It served its purpose. It was a ham sandwich. Because so again, our truth wanted to be the 24 7 US champion like John Cena, but he can't see this. And of course, right after the match, the whole loser locker room comes out and gives us our truth. And there's a lot less losers in the loser locker room because, again, WWE let go of Luke Harper, Brody Lee, I forget his real name, let go of The Ascension, Victor and Connor, and they released Sin Cara. And we'll see Sin Cara soon in AAA. So we'll see Sin Cara for the mess known as Triple Mania. <laughs> That's going to be cool. So, yeah, this was a ham sandwich. But um, then uh, Kyrgyz is out taking on Ricochet. So much flippy flying stuff. <sighs> this was a great match. I, I enjoy it when the wrestlers show all the energy. I don't mind when they slow the pace down when they do have to catch their breath because they really didn't do much of that. 
Uh, what was the... F- oh, no, that was that match. Again, Ricochet. Again, he caught Akira, uh, Akira Tozawa in midair. I didn't realize how small Akira Tozawa actually is. Ricochet is not that big of a guy. Akira Tozawa was actually a, a little bit smaller. Again, it was a well... It was a slow pace by Ricochet, which was smart. Akira, slow German suplex. Oh, you know you're thinking about that the whole way. And those heavy chops woo, by Ricochet, that was good. And he tried to trade chops. Akira was not getting the better of that. Eventually, Ricochet does hit a recoil and pins Tozawa. A good showing, though, by Tozawa. This was a surf and turf match. Then we have Ricochet taking on Matt Hardy. This was interesting. Um, Matt Hardy did all his delete stuff. Matt Hardy is probably going to be gone soon. It was fun to see him back. His brother Jeff has all kind of issues with stuff. So I wish both of them the best of luck. And there will always be a married delete from one hobo Tom. And I have to figure out if I'm going to bring back the hate club. So that should be interesting. Put that in... Um, Daytona Beach Bomb Fight League. Have Hobo Tom a member of the Hate Club. Ooh. I'll have to figure out whose partner should be, though. Oh, I know. I can... Um. Oh, I could just... <laughs> I could do that, too. Tom and Matt, the Hate Club. Actually, I think that was what our tag team was going to be called. I forget. I'll have to ask Matt later. Was there ever a tag team or fashion called the Hate Club? Why do I think in NWA or WCW there was at one time? I don't know. That, that's a thought from something else. Then we had, of course, um, Rick Shea versus Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy's getting a little more physically. He's not doing as much aerial stuff. Again, he's getting old. He has few vertebrae, which must suck. Which leads me to another question. Why are all my friends like sick and sickly? Is it just is it them? Or is it me just being healthy? I don't know. Some days I think it's me. You hear some ailments I know people have them. Is this normal to have? Why don't I have any of this? My back just hurts every so often, my leg. But again, I'm on my feet all day. That makes sense. I don't know, that's a whole other thing. What happened though is that I want to say Matt Hardy hit the razor's edge. An old school move. I like that. Um, it was really short, though. Again, Ricochet did the running shooting star press, which is amazing. And it went from, and this is the second time we've seen it, a roll up where Ricochet, where Matt Hardy was going to go for a twist of fate. Ricochet rolled him up. I'm not a fan of repeat finishers. If you're going to do a roll up, at least don't make it different. Uh, it was a good match. It was a ham sandwich match. Then it was Rick J versus Alberto Carrillo. And yes, you know what? Selena Vega, I can roll my R's better than most Puerto Ricans. And definitely better than Kyla. Selena Vega. And Andrade. Seeing Almes. Uh, but with this match, again, uh, Ricochet. Ri- Ricochet. What is this? Umberto Carrillo. This was fun. Um, Umberto, he actually went for Kimura. He's actually learning real technical wrestling. I like that. That means he's evolving. Instead of being a flippy, flippy guy, he's like, you know what? I can do the ground and pound, too. He tried for that Kimura. That was pretty cool to see Umberto, again, these two are so amazing. Umberto was scary because he tried to do that handstand flippy thing. Ricochet just kicked his arm out of the way. And he fell. That's good because that means Umberto has to end lighting things up. Then they trade kicks. It's amazing. Uh, Umberto, Umberto did the Aztec press. How they jump from rope to rope is beyond me. Jumping off ropes are easy. Jumping rope to rope and off rope. Without breaking your neck or ankles or knees or hips or head or being concussed or snapping bones. I don't understand how they do it, but they do. They are highly trained professional folks. 
in that ouch ooh, outside the ring. And it was a superplex, and then eventually Armporto wins because Lena Vegas there. I'll tell you what, this was a fun part of the match. This was another surf and turf match. <coughs> Although it got ugly. Then Andrade showed up. And he decided to beat down poor Umberto. He didn't care about winning the match. He hit the hammerlock DDT on the concrete on the outside. So, of course, the EMTs have to come out and tend to him. Rey Mysterio came out. He made the save. And then Seth came out. He started to beat up Rey. So, so wait a sec. What, what happened to this goblin, man? Wait. This was a can of soup, though. And you know what? This kind of marred the whole gauntlet match because it was—I was so looking forward to that. Just the arrogance and the la sombra of the leader of Los Ingobernables de Japón to go on Alberto Carrillo. That would have been great, but I tell you what—the whole gauntlet match—it was a cheeseburger match. And Seth Rollins came out, he wanted to beat up Ray, and then challenges Ray for his title, mainly because Ray gave Kevin Owens the, the PVC pipe, oh, I mean lead pipe, to beat him up with. So there's his receipt. Then we had Asuka taking on Deanna Perrazzo. Boo, Deanna Perrazzo! Boo! Boo! You mock my princess, Kimberly, by doing the bow. Only Princess Kimberly should do that bow. Boo! 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 He booed forever. Is that you, Chispa? Are you snoring again? My cat's like asleep. Even she was booing Deanna Peraza. For the most part, Asuka comes out. Again, Asuka's outfit's getting skimpier. I like that. Or the color tone's changing, which is good. And boo Deanna Peraza. Again, she, she, she dare copies my princess, Kimberly. Boo! Did I say that enough? Boo! She's on the same level as Boo, Sonya Deville. Asuka, again, master of jiu-jitsu submissions. She's good. Uh, Deanna Prazo's not too bad herself. Uh, locks in the Fujiwara armbar. Got pretty deep. Oh, Samoa Joe's so good. He has to be on commentary forever. I don't care what happens. He's in that, like, I just hope they haven't seen him like Taz. Poor Taz. But, again, it was a good back and forth for a while between Deanna Prazo, boo, Deanna Prazo, and, and yay, Asuka. Uh, then Asuka was teasing the finisher. She, she teased missing Deanna Prazo. She's like, no, no, no. That means something, because Deanna Prazo is not worth the, the use of the green mist. And, yeah, I know Prazo stole my idea of glitter dust bomb. I, I'd be upset. Be very upset. Uh, if Asuka eventually does lock in the Asuka lock. She teases a lot. It's great. Asuka wins. Even though it's boo Deanna Prazo. It was a cheeseburger match. Then we had a Becky Lynch interview. She wants to fight Asuka. That sounds pretty fair. Then we get to the main event of the evening. It was AJ Styles taking on Randy Orton. And, it, you know, even though they did have a match before, this is pretty good. It's been a while. It's not like you're doing it back to back, so that's pretty cool. Uh, with this match, it was so hard hitting. And it's so hard for these two to have a bad match. You have slow, methodical Randy Orton. Versus New Japan Pro Wrestling AJ match. This was a great match. People said it was slow, plotting. That's the way Orton is. AJ is also the best when he's out there. He can be very methodical. Picking apart. Uh, Orton gets stuck in the calf pressure. Oh, wow. Except for Orton's too long. But he's in that for a long time. And AJ Salas knows when he smells blood. Because he, uh, any Randy Orton rolls to the outside. AJ Salas is smart. Goes to the outside. Chop blocks Randy Orton. 
you know, the kind of the methodicalness, or then it just, just gives him the, the thumb to the eye, the straight thumb to the eye. Turn that from his pops. So good. They trade blows for a little bit. Uh, what else about this? Man? Oh, yeah. Um, AJ teased a phenomenal forearm. He, he did once try to get Randy Orton into the South Clash. That wasn't happening. Randy Orton was trying to do the draping DDT. The first time didn't work. I think the second time it did. Uh, AJ Styles did try a phenomenal form. The first time, Randy Orton was going to set up for the RKO. Uh -uh. AJ's smarter than that. However, not so smart because he tried it again, figuring he had it scouted. Then on the second time, he had the R Randy Orton hit the RKO. That was pretty fun. Uh, Randy Orton got the win in his kind of normal, like, heelish, arrogant pin. This was a good match. Again, if you're a fan of New Japan style match like that, just hard hitting wrestling, um, a good balance of striking and wrestling. I'm kind of playing with my cat's ears with my toe. That's why I like distracted. This was a good surf and turf match. So when the club got involved, they say, No, Randy, you're, we're going to beat you up. You beat up our leader. We're going to beat you up. Viking Raiders come down, and whoa, they get beat up too. The club stands tall because they're all too sweet. And I'll tell you what, again, this was a fun surf and turf match. I'll tell you what, for the most part, Raw was actually pretty good. I'll say Raw probably was a good solid bacon cheeseburger. Of a show. Not quite a surf and turf show because there were some done down parts. And the ending of the Gauntlet match was terrible. But most of the matches were really good. And that was raw. So, a little bit about this week. Uh, tomorrow will be my. I don't know if I'm going to do an AEW live stream. I'll, I'll see how I feel. I might do an AEW live stream. It's a lot quicker to do that way. Thursday, I'm off. Oh. At least not from this. I have to keep the whole house for Christmas. Friday, I'll do my SmackDown review. Sorry, there's no wrestling. Sun oh, Sunday, there's no wrestling. Monday, I know there's spoilers out there. I'll just kind of go through Raw pretty quick. And then it'll set us up for a Merry Drunk Miss Eve Daytona Beach Wrestling Show on Christmas Eve. Live from the Daytona One Center, because it's going to be, for the most part, elimination to see who challenges on Christmas Day for 